right here. And then you're gonna want to stretch it and get it lined up with the grooves. Some Yurikos are gonna have grooves. This one in particular just has a square that you slam the end of it into. And there you go. And then you're gonna to wanna to give it a few rotations to line your belt up properly. Now, so you guys there, you guys most likely understand the reverse process. So you put that back on, and then you got your two Phillips heads. Oh, you're great. These threads over here are starting to not grab onto anything anymore. If you're like me, there's fingerprints all over this now, so I'm gonna wipe it off. And then if you're like me, you get some quick drops. It really needs to be polished. It's very faded. Probably because I accidentally just used this mixture, which has rubbing alcohol in it, because I'm an idiot apparently. I only made that stuff for the grimy spots that get really dirty, for the non colored areas, just the black body parts. Job. Your job is done. Bye, guys. Okay, guys, today I know I just posted a video of this thing being up and running after going through a refurb process. Well, the motor and everything, I'm not gonna take that all apart again. That's good. Um, and that was the main point of that video, was showing that the motor was sounding better. But I didn't really do anything else with the rest of the machine, like this. I'm gonna wash in the deep sink because just wiping it off, you can't get all these dust spots. I'm gonna wash this one. I'm gonna wash the smart back one as well because it's kind of dirty. Um, but yeah, I just washed everything on this power room, but I like using it so much so I've already used it and gotten it all dirty. Um, these this multi cyclonic setup is ass. It does not work at all. It is definitely worse than this setup. And even that setup, because it just is, like, that's after one use. <laughs> but yeah, and I also wash the HEPA filter, they say not to wash them, it's fine. Obviously, I still have to have this screw holding in the HEPA filter, because this cover, it's supposed to clip onto the vacuum, and the clip is broken. So if you look back there closely, I can't even see it. Oh. I can't if you look back very closely. You'll see. Yeah, you can see it back there. There's a random screw going through the body to hold this HEPA filter on. But I could get a new HEPA filter cover, and then I could like just hide the holes that I have to hold on this HEPA filter cover. But this thing spews dust. It literally you can watch it spew dust, so this needs to be on there. <laughs> um, this motor is kind of eh. It's not beautiful sounding. This is a kitten. <laughs> this is a sheep. This has the Helix motor in it, which means it's just a freaking giraffe. It's squealy. And uh, 
This has that cute little 7 amp motor in it, so. Or actually, no, it's actually an 8 amp, because when I took this thing down to the motor, it said 8 amp on the motor itself, so I'm not going to call it an 8 amp. This thing is what I normally use to just clean other vacuums and clean up the floor after I'm done cleaning the vacuum. Just because it's actually kind of nice to use the tools with. It's just kind of a nice little machine. This wheel always falls off. And then I also accidentally... In one of my videos, I did a video of working on this thing and I accidentally got rid of the Bissell logo. I'm usually pretty particular about all my stickers, so... That kind of sucks. That wasn't even a sticker. It was just inked on there. So were these. So I just gotta be careful about that. But yeah. Luckily this one's all still the easy empty logo. And even the... That thing is all messed up. But even that sticker is still on there. You can see this thing's pretty clean too. But it has a lean... See, there's no lean with this thing whatsoever. Obviously. This one, I also washed the app filter on yet again. This is not supposed to do it, but... I'm just going to show you this one after being washed, because I don't feel like taking that screw out to show you. After being washed, it's able to breathe better, but it's still going to act like a app filter, because it is, and they just say you can't wash it, because it'll just fall apart. These, you can wash. It's, it's like a sealed paper. It's a more durable paper. Now, I would not recommend washing. I don't even recommend washing this. I've washed that one because I just kind of didn't have a choice. It really needed it. But, like this Max Performance Epi Filter. Don't wash it if it's paper like this. This is very mushy, crappy paper. These Hoovers have some of the crappiest Epi Filters of all time. I mean, no, they do filter very well, but you can't wash them. These, they're not that bad to wash. And they're expensive. Happy filters are expensive. That's just kind of the gift that keeps on giving with these bagless machines. I really like this thing so far. I haven't even used it yet. I've ran it once. And it was clearly residual stuff in the hose from whenever the guy last used it. Clearly this guy used carpet powder, which is annoying. I mean, I guess I can't really talk because this thing... I accidentally, I didn't realize that there was carpet powder on my floor in there, and I used it today, and I saw a bunch of carpet powder get vacuumed up, and I'm like, fuck, because <laughs> I don't really like vacuuming up carpet powder with my more, like, collectibles. Most people would just consider these pieces of junk, but they're collectibles in my opinion, so that kind of was on accident. I normally don't want to suck up ca carpet powder with these. If I'm sucking up carpet powder, it's a newer machine that can handle it, like, this isn't affected by it whatsoever, that's not... Or a bag machine. Bag, bag machine, don't really give a shit, but yeah. Or my max performances. I don't even do it with the Shark because that thing's got a horrible filtration design. That house too would be fine. This actually won't even be affected because these are actually pretty good filtrators. It's just that twin chamber design gets dirty pretty quick. So, when it comes to the victory here, we need to... These are the two screws that hold the handle on. This is my homemade pre-motor filter that sits in there. And this is the hose, which needs to be washed because ever since I got this thing, I've never washed the filter, the hose before. You can only have it off if you take the handle off, and the handle is in my uh, basement getting some work done on it. <laughs> I, uh, if you guys know, there's like a cupboard hinge reinforcing it because the handle's snap in half. And then or all the cracks that were still showing, I siliconed with my silicone adhesive. And then I also painted it black so you wouldn't see the white silicone adhesive. I mean, you just can still see it, but it's at least it's black, so it won't look as hideous. So, but yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. this doesn't seem to really work anymore. It's stuck, so the vacuum thinks. I don't even know how that really works, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but yeah, it's probably. Oh, I wonder if some of my silicone adhesive got in there and it's stuck. I use some of my silicone adhesive because this is all cracked down here and it worked for a little bit, but now it's not working again. But I care less. It's just a freaking system check I make it here. I know how to take care of my vacuum, so I don't really need that. God, I've had a snuff on nails lately. What the hell? <laughs> but yeah, then also I need to wash my makeshift exhaust filter for this thing, which is actually just the carbon pad for that whole house, too. 
back there that I don't use anymore because the base is all fucked up on it and I don't want to mess it up more. But that whole house too got me a whole other vacuum for free, so which would be this second max performance that I'm just keeping for collecting purposes because might as well keep one brand new since I already have one. I tried getting another whole house too, but Hoover didn't have any of them. And then a day after they shipped this one, they had them in stock. And they're like, well, we do have them in stock now, but we sent you the upgraded version anyway. And I'm like, that that is not the upgraded version. They're, they're totally different machines. So, yeah, I was kind of pissed off about that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a little bit of work to do today, but I'm just going to... What should, what should we do first? I kind of wanted to clean the bag area out even better, so let's do that. So when it comes to doing this, we also need to wipe off my cord that I wired on there a while back. Obviously, this cord is not ideal. It is just... Uh, twist tied or like twisted the wire the terminals are just twisted together and then there's um yeah so they're just twisted together and then there's electrical tape wrapped around it so not ideal eventually what i'm probably gonna do is just put a cut the cord right here and then put a plug on the end of it and then i can just plug an extension cord into it like a black extension cord or i will end up just re finding a 25 foot cord online and wiring it on there properly. So that's some Teltech Studios did a video on how to do it, so I'm gonna do it now. I've never done it all the way down to the motor before. I've only done it this way, which is not quite proper. I don't really like how that's bending. Not exactly what you want with a cord like this. Um, well, it's kind of laying down anyways, so it's fine. So yeah, um, basically, um, I need to find a better have you guys right there. There we go. So yeah, we just need to wipe out all of this. Now, there's a couple different cleaners I like to use. In this bottle, there's a Mr. Clean and water mix. This is a big thing of spick and span spray that I got for a buck at Walmart. Um, it seems to work pretty well. Um, and then also, I got this huge thing of Simple Green. You know how much I paid for this? Two seventy-five, guys. So, <laughs> not bad. And it cleans really well. This is actually Simple Green mixed with rubbing alcohol, 50%. That I will not... Actually, I might use that in here just because... Eh, no. I only use this for, like, cleaning out hoses and filters. Rubbing alcohol probably isn't good for filters, but when it's a really nasty, dirty filter, this stuff is... That's why I made this mixture. It's just 50% rubbing alcohol, so it's not like it's dangerous or anything. Um, so we're just going to use the Spicker Span. I would use the Mr. Clean, but I need to just probably start mixing my Mr. Clean in a different bottle. Because I got this bottle like 10 years ago for 75 cents, and it's the sprayer is like not working anymore. So, yeah. So we'll just use some of the Spickle Span. We're gonna kind of use a bit of this stuff because there's a lot of dirt that I wanna get rid of. Because once this thing's done being pretty much refurbed, I'm probably gonna give it a break from use. Plus, I'm gonna order some Arm & Hammer bags. That's my favorite bag for vacuums like this that you can't get HEPA bags for. Lately, I found these at my hardware store a while back. There's just these VAC brand bags, and this is all I could find. I got a two pack for a buck. They work but they break really easily. I think I hit like a rock or something and now there's a pinhole in the bottom. So yeah, that is not what I want. So, and they don't seal well. Like, the seal is cheesy, it ripped from the first time I put it on there. But yeah. So I want Arm & Hammer bags because they are actually decent bags. Decent quality bags for the price. I'll probably just order like three pack of those or something. So, so now you're just gonna wanna wipe this. I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing, but at least you can, you know, just kinda get the idea of how to like, not refurbish your machine, but kind of what to do. You just 
spray it and then let it sit for a second at least. And <laughs> yeah, this stuff smells really nice. This kind of smells like that spick and span you can get at Dollar Tree because this was like a little bit more. It was like a buck fifty, and at Dollar Tree you can get like a way smaller thing. Matter of fact, the spick and span they sell at Dollar Tree is this same size, so that's six fluid ounces, and this is thirty-two. So six for a dollar. At least that's what I'm. Yeah, six fluid ounces, and then <laughs> this is thirty-two. So buck fifty at Walmart, a buck at Dollar Tree. So you're, you might as well just spend the extra fifty cents and get this stuff. I don't know why Spick and Span's green. I don't know why it's in an orange thing. I love the smell of Spick and Span. I used to get that Dollar Tree stuff because I used to get all my cleaning supplies from Dollar Tree. And I was like having a cleaning spree, helping around the house. I still help around my house, but I'm just not really too into cleaning anymore. You know, obviously once you start getting older, it's like, you. <laughs> Come on, all those years of me cleaning the bathroom at five. Isn't that good enough, Mom? Come on. But then again, it's not really fair because it was me that chose to clean it back then. That wasn't hers, so technically I should be willing to clean it once she wants me to. <laughs> I still do, that doesn't mean I want to though. <laughs> Whatever. I can't even get to that screw because this is in the way. Oh wait, no, there actually is a... Maybe I'll take that thing off. And this thing isn't... Yeah, this stuff works really well. It's eroding the dirt really easily. Can't really see what I'm doing now. It's really hard to get all the dirt, I gotta say. Because you have to go in all these different rec directions to get all these ridges to clean and then you get all these nasty streaks from the dirt getting just smeared around. Plus this shirt is like falling apart it seems like. Looks like I've just made things worse. <laughs> I have to go back over this with a microfiber cloth and some of my quick wax because that'll shine it up nicely. still runs like a top. Let's see, when did I even buy this thing? This was the first vacuum that I ever used my allowance on. 
Well, I guess that wouldn't have been when I bought it, but this, this one was made on the 101st day of 2011. This is a model 23T7-W. I much prefer this over the Easy Vax that came before this one in terms of usability, but I really want the Easy Vax that were before this one for collecting purposes because those ones were actually kind of nice. Got this random crevice tool here. vacuums it really sucks literally my biggest nightmare is cleaning bag vacuums because bag vacuums have this little compartment you need to clean and unless you buy freaking ten dollars a bag HEPA bags I think if I were to buy HEPA bags it would be those clean fairy HEPA bags because they're not top-notch HEPA bags but they do work that's what Intel Tech Studios buys for his bissels because that's like his, his bag bissels are like his dream I don't think I don't think you would want to be a thing if you didn't have his bag of <laughs> I think when it comes to having a daily driver, I, my bagless Hoovers are kind of my go-to. I, I mean, I've thought about switching to one of those newer, uh, the um, Bissell Allergen Pet. That's one that I had thought about getting. And then there's also the Bissell Power Lifter pet, which I really want. And then there's the Power Glide pet that this sells, and they're all swivel, and apparently they've got sealed systems, nice attachment set, and have nice performance, so. But I, I guess I've just gotten used to the way Hoovers act and how they perform. Like, they all kind of perform the same. So I just don't really want to switch, I guess. It's kind of like once you start driving Fords for your whole life, and that's what you're used to working on, you don't really want to switch. You know, I already know how to take Hoovers down to the motor. Them newer Bissels, or I mean, the Bissels still have their budget lineup, and I think if I were to get a new bag machine, you know, because right now my bag machine, when it comes to getting used a lot, is the Smart Bag that's like one of my daily drivers. Um, and if I were to get another bag machine, I really want to try that power lifter bagged pet. Cause you know, I can start getting those HEPA bags and have a decent filtrating vacuum. So even this stuff isn't making it look any better here. Without the light shining on it, it doesn't look that bad, I guess. <laughs> Spills now, we can wash a few parts that need to be washed. Okay, we're here at the sink to wash some parts. 
I figured I'd show you the handle. I haven't even seen it yet. Oh god. <laughs> eh, I mean, it's not... Actually did turn out kind of nice. So yeah, I just silicone all these gaps and I've painted it, filled in any holes and stuff. Now we don't have a brass hinge anymore. Got some mud. It's really cold down here, so that doesn't help. It actually turned out okay. I used a matte clear coat, so but it would look somewhat decent. So yeah, it's definitely gonna look a little bit better. Back over to the sink. Oh yeah, I figured I might as well just show you the shop. So yeah, there's my basement vacuum. It's this beat up old Eureka Bravo. It was a trash find, but it gets the job done. 71Y7, that's a part mach parts machine at best. A um, bunch of other stuff. A lot of DeWalt batteries. I just got more DeWalt stuff for my boss. Um, what one did I just get? This one up here. Filled with all kinds of 18 volt DeWalt goodies. And then there's some random stuff in here. A lot of two stroke oil from the summer when I'm mowing lawns. I also got some uh, Hoover Style A bags. There's a Style A, a really cheap paper one. And then Y bags actually work on there too, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's cold down here. This is some very good Tisto oil that I got for free. <laughs> Ooh, one of these little scrubs might come in handy. Yeah. There's none that I really want to use. Bought more Ajax dishwashing liquid. Because that's like the best one. So, let's get everything out here. I'm gonna be careful with this because I don't want to blast that sticker off. Like it's beautiful looking anyways, but it is original. So. Okay. So the hose, I just like to um free normally, but that's running out, so we'll just put some of this really cheap dishwashing liquid down in it. This is, this one's like 75 cents, this is lots, totally awesome, but it's 50 fluid ounces, so, and it works, kind of, <laughs> obviously it was only 75 cents, so you can't really complain. So we'll just start by running some warm water down this hose. The main reason I want to wash the hose is for the outside because it's like all dusty and all these ridges. But it also doesn't smell that nice. Can I turn the cold water on? I did too. Not warm. <laughs> yes, yes, we can actually just. This stuff is so strong that a little bit of that was left in there is going to be enough. See how sudsy it still is? Wash my homemade 
little bit of the owl. Really hot. I'll never leave any soap in there. That'll just make it clog up faster. Basically what you do with clothes <laughs> is you just spray it on there and then you let your clothes hang dry. So we're just going to do the same thing with my filters. That's what I've been doing. Oh, it smells so good. And that's what you do with a vacuum that has a shop motor that gives off a lot of burning and carbon dust. You know, you guys are probably thinking, uh, your vacuum sounds like it's burning and you're still using it. Yep. Because it performs really well still. It still has lots of suction. And air this victory has probably more airflow. I guess just ship this thing to back lab, have him test it. <laughs> Cause I don't have any of the stuff to test airflow. Cause the stuff is kind of spendy. This hose has a pinhole in it. That's fine. Oh, oh my god. Maybe it's not a pinhole. Oh well, it's just a homemade exuction suction release valve, that's all. Oh wow. This cute little filter almost went down the drain. That one's been good. Although it probably would have slipped it down there just fine. I think the inside of it's good. Alright. So now I just want to get the outside of it. It was like a little bit of scrub free, which is what this stuff is, left at the bottom. And this is mostly water that we put in there. And it's still plenty sudsy enough to clean some flimsy little vacuum filters. This stuff is really strong. It's like a lemon scent. Oh well. 
yeah, this this thing this this victory is something's going just out in the thing because like there is lots of black, which is usually a sign of carbon dust. Well, <laughs> you shouldn't be getting that much. Yeah, it's literally black. Eventually, it's going to need a new motor, which I probably won't even get a new motor for it. I won't want to spend that much on a motor for a vacuum this heat up. I've gotten the motor sounding a little better. You know, the video I posted last, it actually does sound a decent bit better. It's... It still has that same, like, uh, sound, but it's quieter, so, and that's all I was really going for, because, it was kind of just getting loud to the point where I didn't even want to use it anymore, but now, it's something I want to use, not like it's a vacuum that really should be getting used as often, because it is collectible, but, and it has the original motor in it, so. Now we'll just get to this bag door. Oh wow, <laughs> you can see the suds running off of it, they're brown. Yep. This stuff gets that dirt that you can't even see. Plus I want to do a demo video with this vacuum, and I want it to sound somewhat presentable, so. I can't complain about this thing too much. I did get it for free, and it has all the attachments, so. I'm just gonna try and get as much of the dust as I can. Very hot water seems to be loosening this stuff up along with this water mixed with scrub free. There. That's why I have this balloon thingy on here. It's meant for filling up balloons and uh, adds a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, this dish soap brand, I will probably never buy again. This is extra, it wasn't very good at all. That lost totally awesome, it's better, and it was way cheaper. So yeah, we'll see you back upstairs. So now we'll start the drying process. We got cat to help. Oh, sorry buddy. <laughs> That's his spot, that's where the heater comes out, so, yeah, um, so we'll go ahead and get the bag door out of here. Hopefully, we got rid of the majority of the dust. You know, we kind of, I mean, I definitely still see some, like, right there, but definitely got most of it. I think I still gotta do the smart back bag door. I'm not gonna film that one, though. these random Butterfinger caps, Butterfinger ice cream caps, and this random box that I drew on years ago to prop stuff up higher, because there's like this random little inch that the fan doesn't do that. Hoses aren't even worth trying to put in front of the fan, so I only have a way of hand drying them. This is too floppy to really do much with. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh God, <laughs> this is quite wet. Oops, that was kind of cool actually. <laughs> oh yeah, see, here's some of that stricken span. Oh, this says 22 fluid ounces. Yeah, I wonder if that one bottle had, it said six fluid ounces, but I don't think it was that small, but still 22 versus 32 for a one, like a 50 cents difference. And it's like the same stuff, I believe. Was this, did, was this one a lavender? Yeah, no, that wasn't the lavender one. Cause you can get spick and span in lavender scent or Trying to get in? We've already got one of them here. No. Oh yeah. I've already got one hose hang dry here. It's the uh, Max Performance hose, or the Max Performance that I actually used. Right there. Man, this thing really kinked up. Or not kinked, but it's like you know, muscle memoryed into certain ways. This mess. <laughs> give you guys a better look of how this turned out so not perfect but it is quite the upgrade i mean it's better this is where the hose goes through it's all scratched up but yeah obviously Yeah, that's the carbon brushes <laughs> making that sound. But yeah, the back of it still needs to have some detailed cleaning done and some of my quick wax because the quick wax actually kind of like hides all these fine scratches. And this was made on the 350th day of 1997. Yeah, 350th day of 1997, 12 amps. The Eureka Company. Oh, this one was made in the Bloomington, Illinois plant. Model 4465 Type D. Yeah, it's a pretty nice machine. This is back when they were made in the US, Illinois to be exact, apparently. A little bit of dust scattered down to there when I was wiping this, so I'll have to vacuum that out. so bad I need to get a new filter for that but yeah I think it still has the original it's like it's falling off it yeah this one will get some fresh air even if it's like literally two slides down the alley okay just letting you know you could come if you wanted okay I'm filming a video so oh fuck you're fine I'm going <laughs> So, it's kind of weird how they didn't run this through the bag compartment like they do on most other machines. Run it through there. They ran it on the outside like this, which is kind of different. This is the original cord here. Some dickhead cut the cord off of it up here. If you're going to do it, do it right. Cut it down here, which that's not even the right way. I would just yank it as hard as I can and pull it out of the whole vacuum. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not. I hate scrappers, so why would I do it? But you only get like. 30 cents for one of these cords. There's actually not much in them. Yeah, this is just wires, terminals twisted together. And, looks like and then I also have some like wood separating in there so it doesn't run funky. First time doing it, I can't promise it's gonna be perfect. Why is it like 
confusing. There we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, this is that rubbing alcohol with lavender, simple green mix. This stuff is strong. That's what I normally use on my hoses because it clears them up. But it's so strong. I just put some of this crappy thing in there. You can get it at, for a dollar, dollar kernel. Yeah, this was only two seventy-five. Not bad. Because that's a big. That's a whole gallon. So yeah, there's the attachments for this machine. Came with all the attachments. Crumbs told us here, extension one goes here, and then the dusting brush goes on the handle, which is in the basement. So, yeah. I'm not gonna wash that hose out. I vacuumed it out so there's no like actual dirt or anything in there. <laughs> yep, this is when Eureka's used to be made nice. Very well built. Obviously this one kind of isn't the best you know, look on Eureka just because it's not in very good condition. There. These are the bits that I use. These are heart bits. I have more right there. I have a whole thing of heart tools. But yeah. I get all that DeWalt stuff for free. From Meebles. Where? What was I gonna... I mean, I guess it's kind of the end of the video for now. But, yeah. Alright, back to working on the vacuum. Uh... Why is my slash not working? She's got the perfect timing. So, yeah. Um, so that's how that turned out. Oh my God. So I'm going to stop the video until she's done. Oh